Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of Midweek Matters. I'm James Graham, joined by Charlie White and uh, and also Brandon Smith. Um, bit of a bone to pick with you both, both, both late. <laughs> uh, after all the shit that I cop, mm. um, Charlie put me under a lot of pressure this morning to make sure I was here on time to do the reads. Yeah. Um, and you turn up late. Well, I didn't actually turn up late. I was here. I, well, I was here at 11.45 and I was like, oh, I'm hungry. Do you mind if I go get a sandwich before we start recording? We, we talked on the phone and you you said you were running late because you uh, were on a phone call. I was like, well, hang on. Surely yeah. you can use your phone in the car. Yeah, but you know when you like leave a building and it cuts out the service and stuff? So I just sort of had to stay where I was when I was on the call. The say, elevator. The elevator, yeah. yeah. You say, look, I'm that just hopping in the car, I'll call you back. I'm a people pleaser though, so I just like yeah. let the conversation well, you're not pleasing go. me. <laughs> no. Well, I was also worried about cheese as well if I had to pick them up or not, so I had other things in my mind, yeah. you know? Well, 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 also, mate, you you threw me, like, you threw me for a loop. Like, mm. I, I'm, I'm He there. did hang you out the dry last week yeah. for being late. And then what, what about this cheese? So we go, so I go, do you want a coffee? And he goes, oh... Maybe. <laughs> I'm like, well, he doesn't okay. know whether he wants one or well, not. I, I yeah. know, but what am I? What am I just, just talking to the to the server. Oh, can I get um, a large almond flat white, please? And I might have a nice long black. Like, well, what use is that? I, they, they don't want a maybe. It's I, I wasn't you do sure you... yet, though. I wasn't sure if I yeah. wanted one. It was well, through the question. I wasn't expecting it. I had to ever think about it. Yeah. Because I've already had a long black today, and you have another one. There are three shots there, so it's midday, and I'm going to have six shots of coffee. Oh, imagine. Yeah. Well, it's a reality. It's not a reality. It's it's just <laughs> toughen up and have two coffees. Well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks we'll very much for the coffee. We'll uh, thanks for the coffee. If you're sorry. too scared to have two coffees <laughs> before midday, just let me know and we can crack on. Sorry for being late. Oh, sorry, yeah, I was also late, so I'm sorry. But don't give me a breach or anything like that, please. <laughs> um, yeah, I was... I was in some very important meetings mm. on, on where the, the Roosters' future goes next year. So, yeah. But I will just say culture comes from the top. So if you're <laughs> you're the leader here at the buy round and if you're late, we get, it's going to you know bleed down to the rest of us and that's why we came yeah. late. So that's just a be victim aware. mentality. Well, mentality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well I, I've got a bit of a bone t- to pick. Like, So f- firstly, cheese. With we'll, we'll get into the Roosters stuff, but the video doing the rounds on... <laughs> <laughs> Should we play it for everyone? I'll pull it up. Yeah, bro. The- I, like it's. I can't do anything about that. That's not me putting that up. That's like me having fun on my missus' phone, and she's just sold me to the. Do you know what's funny? I actually woke up this morning. She woke me up this morning and said, "Babe, my view, my my TikTok's got a hundred hundred thousand views," and I was like, <laughs> "What fucking TikTok?" And then she showed me. I was like, "There is no bloody way you put that up." Like, because I do it all the time. I play the TikTok games all the time, um, but they don't go up. And for some reason, oh well. Are we gonna play? Yeah, it? let's play it. Now, play now it. I think she, now I think she's got like this. Do- It's got now, it's got 180,000 views. So your missus has gone viral. Yeah. So, you gotta stop playing those TikTok she, games. She got, caught me slipping, eh? Yeah. Holy heck. That's so bad. Um, yeah, I hope she doesn't get any ideas of trying to go like influencer mode. 
Mm. But I can't, I can't actually, I accept full responsibility for that video. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually... It's really annoying trying to watch you get the ball through the hole and say, oh, God, can you just... Mate, like, try it out. See you... I, I, no, because I'm not, I'm not like that. But, mate, you're not the only one because our friend, <laughs> our friend Charlie White, or should I say White Chocolate, or even other, otherwise known as the Streamer Sorcerer. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is a favour for a mate as no, well. I didn't get paid for this, by the way. This mate, is a favour for a mate. Mate, don't you... Right, by the way, this is not come from who th- who you think it's come from. It's not come Tony. from Jordan. Does it come from it Tony? It doesn't matter. I, I just All you need to know, it's not come from Jordan. So yeah. our friend Charlie White... Um, <laughs> Please you, redeem you, me. You, you... Well, hello. <laughs> who, who are you? Ah, you're not familiar with my work. I'm the streaming sorcerer. I've got issues. <laughs> What I tell you is you're still going to need my help, okay? I'm the streaming sorcerer. I help you sort out all your apps, free to wear and streaming, okay? Alright, all all good. Hubble puts it all in the one interface. So, ah, well. What if you want to watch a rom-com? Your mum likes thrillers. <laughs> Mumble has that covered as well. You can set up your own personalised watch list. <laughs> your shows will never get lost. I've got one final way to help you out. A light bulb mode. The search bar. You can search any movie, any TV show. Hubble is already across that, actually. In fact, you don't even have to type to search. You can just oh. use your voice. <laughs> you can't be oh. Julia Roberts. Right. They thought of everything, Hubble. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm a studio sorcerer. I'm still a big deal, okay? I'm gonna go. <laughs> what hey, the? Boy. Good, yeah. I'll just ring you see if I can play some with Hubble, please. Yeah. That'd be great. Thanks so much for that. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh, Charlie. You know, you look after a friend. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Didn't get paid for it. Um, but shout out to Hubble, great service. <laughs> and if they are interested in any more He's videos still going. like that, the streaming sorcerer. <laughs> if they are interested in any more videos like that, doors always open. Well, well cheese, you, you said you were on uh, prescription me- medication. Yeah, I was, you... I was drug Did, induced. Uh, Charlie, uh, um, what he were you? Like what he were you was, it looks like he was on the illicit, <laughs> like the illicit drug. Charlie, you look like, <laughs> yeah. It's um, not my finest moment. Probably should put... sorcerer, I don't really it. think too much though about doing things. You know, just just do. Just go with the flow. Go flow. If a friend yeah. asks you to help film a video, you just say yes. Wait, yeah. I'm in. But what, like, yeah, let's film a video. But then, did you think, like, what are you going to do with this, Jordan? Yeah, well, I didn't realize. Like, <laughs> well, Jordan's a TikToker himself, so he actually has like lots of followers and stuff. And he gets and brand deals, and that's what it was from. But then I didn't realize like. Normally, brand you do videos like probably two thousand people say something like nothing, but then Hubble put heaps of money behind it, and it's got like seven hundred thousand views. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't get a clip. I Surely didn't get a clip. Nah, nah. That's bullshit, you, mate. You're only Jordan I needs chipping at least five hundred bucks for the public embarrassment. That's true. That's yeah. true. I, I reckon the what, what's it the streamer streaming sorcerer. I sorcerer. think it was cool. You put yeah, effort yeah. into that too because that, no, well, that's it, not easy to just do on one take. Yeah, yeah, I had to do heaps of takes for it. <laughs> I stuffed it up heaps, and they're like, "Oh, you do it, you do it, just do that again, just do it different." I was like, oh, "Yeah, right, sweet, <laughs> whatever." You looked like you were like you were in character, like you're very much like maybe I should be an sorcerer. actor. Yeah, well, mate, like yeah. you've uh, mate, if they don't come. Flooding. Good start to the show. I'm gutted because I, I think said, the light bulb moment was yeah was a really nice touch. <laughs> we had the light mate. bulb coming behind there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Oops. Oh yeah. And the other thing also now that we've gotten you and me out of the way, cheese. The other one is James Graham. Now Grayson Waller is officially going to be coming down to Sydney, but I believe he's too he? scared to wrestle you, is so he he's gonna... not going to be wrestling you. Yeah. He he wouldn't have the balls to, to even show up. No, because it's in like ten days, which yeah. I'm I'm excited about. Like I'm ready to get it on. Me and Jack Bonds are tag team and been doing who's a few... Jack Bonds? He's my partner, tag team partner, the one that actually spoke some sense. Oh, the... yeah. He in... looks like a bit of a crazy motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been working out our little <laughs> moves together. So Grayson Wallace in town. He, he he wouldn't have the courage. He doesn't know what courage is. <laughs> he wouldn't have the courage to even turn off because he knows. I reckon. No, in fact. I know he he doesn't have it. Mm. He's not got the bottle. He'd be shit scared to come anywhere near the bollocks. It. Because <laughs> you know, 
he, he's he's good in front of the camera, but in real life, no chance. It's a bit like almost Rey Mysterio versus the Big Show. Yeah, oh mate, get, get, well Grayson Waller wouldn't turn up. He, he he's not got the balls. Mm. Um, Have you seen the McMahon documentary though? Uh, no, I, I haven't. I've heard about it, but it's he's in a bit of strife, McMahon. But this is about. Is it more about setting up the WWF? No, nah, yeah, it's a bit of everything. They and they get into the the scandal at the end, oh, the final they? episode. Yeah, because he's been charged with sex trafficking. Oh, that's a bit like P Diddy and alleged, yeah. Well, I, I've started to watch um, this one about the the two brothers that that killed their parents. Oh, monsters! Yeah, I haven't watched it, but it looks scary. No, no joke. Like I, I went. I, well, he, he was, I guess, a mate, yeah? Like, in primary school. He left primary school, went to, like, an all-boys school, like, paid, like, a proper, like, like paid for school. Uh, he, he killed his mum and dad, where I'm from. What the fuck? Yeah, Brian Blackwell, isn't it? Like, there's documentaries on YouTube. About the guy for About Union. The guy, yeah, wow, yeah. It's crazy. Like, in my record of achievement from primary school, there's a piece of work. It's by James Graham and Brian Blackwell. I see you worked on a subject together. Yeah, like it's insane. Like it it rattled everyone really, but um, yeah, like it's weird when you, like there's way more to this story than just me saying, but yeah, I Mm. went to school with a lad that, and I guess he was a mate. Mm. I didn't see him since we left. Was he odd? Was he like an odd guy in school? Would you see it coming? Or He was like the biggest nerd ever. Yeah, right, right. Like very straight A student, like came from a, like a really good home. Mm. And it's hard to know exactly what happened because he's... Did people like, like you call him a nerd? No, I got I got on nerd really well. Then hence why... <laughs> Smart decision. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So... Doing one bizarre. project with you, eh? Made him want to <laughs> knock his parents <laughs> like, off. Jesus Christ. That's like us here at the bar. Right? <laughs> That's well, what I mean. The frustration. You always late. <laughs> It's building up. It's it's fixing my own life. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's weird as well about that that doc or well, not documentary that um that drama on the the two kids that killed their mum and dad. I was actually sat there watching it with my mum and dad. Oh, going, wow. you know, it, it is a bit. It's a strange thing to watch up with your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can imagine it is. It's, it's more than strange. It's a little fucked up. Yeah. Um, should we get into the football? <laughs> we Actually, well, cheese, uh, roosters. Um, obviously, very uh, disappointing way to end of the season. Um, re- well, not retire, but move on to some absolute legends. Uh, have you been part of the? Obviously, you've just been at the, the meeting, but have you been any? Had nah. any part in like the postseason? Uh, not really celebrations, but just sort nah. Of- like they they went on a boat party. Um, yeah, I, I stayed at home, mate, because my knee, my knee at the moment is like sore, just like, you know Even what I mean? Just, like just, yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. sitting still and um, like I don't really want to be on a boat with crutches yeah. uh, around a, a bunch of drunk, messy boys, but um, it looked like they enjoyed themselves. And they, like, I already text Luke Carey beforehand. I was like, man, I, um, I can't be on a boat. Like, mm. um, but I'm a little bit upset about that. Mm. Just didn't want the knee to blow up like a, yeah, like a balloon, enough. and um, but uh, yeah, it looks like they really enjoyed themselves. Mm. I think they did it over a couple of nights. Mm. So, what, what's the, the 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 feeling in the camp? Because you know, externally, people are saying, "Look, you're losing Kaz, you're losing Manu, uh, Jared, um, Tupanua, Suolihi. Obviously, yourself and um, Sam Walker are, are going to be out until midway through next year. A lot of people are saying the Roosters need to blow up their style, change things." What what's the the sort of mood in the camp and within the group? Um, I don't really know too much, but from my opinion, like, it's, we're not really focused on the people that are leaving. We're more so focused on who's sticking around and what we've got to do. But like, I, I semi agree with blowing up the style, but it's not so much the style we've got right now. But it's finding a style and sticking to it throughout the whole season. Mm. Whereas I found out in a lot of the games we played this year, it was when we when we started to beat teams, um, we started to go away from like playing a, like a consistent football game. Yeah. We started throwing the ball around and just getting so excited and wanting to score heaps of points. And in doing that, we we leaked points. We we let teams like on the bottom half of the ladder score at least eighteen points against us all year. And when you're doing that, you're not building that 
good, consistent football structure or style, like you said before, that that's going to beat the good teams. Mm. And then those that came out against Penrith and Melbourne, like that came out in our football style. We started throwing the ball around and like, yeah, it might have worked against like a Parramatta or, mm. or South Sydney at the time. But when Melbourne and Penrith play, they're filling the space. They're, they're getting up. They're, they're going like they're, they're filling the gaps that other teams probably wouldn't fill. And it's putting a lot of pressure on our, our attack and, and we're not making the metres we probably want to be making just because we're used to that style against a, a, a lesser team almost. Mm. So um, that's something that we kind of spoke about and uh, at the meeting today and um, just finding a rooster style um, and sticking to it throughout the season, even if it means beating teams, you know, 24 to six or yeah, you I know mean, and yeah. not chasing the points when we when we start getting ahead mm. not smelling the blood but just sticking to that style and just perfecting it and that's exactly what Penrith have done for the last five yeah. years Is everyone knows exactly how Penrith's going to attack you and it's just like it's the same it's, from minute one to minute yeah, 80 it's, yeah. everyone knows what they're going to do everyone knows the plays they're going to run and it's just like can you do it with us is the feeling that it's like a failure this year or is the feeling more like, no, geez, absolutely. we were right there. If we didn't get a couple of injuries, we, we would have won it. No, it's a failure. Like at the end of the day, what are we here for? We're here to win premierships. Our side was good enough to win premierships. Um, if you ask anyone in our team, like I've just said that off the bat, but if you ask anyone in the team, everyone's going to say it was a failure. Mm. Like we're not a team that's uh, – you know, a team that's like, if we make the eight, it's it's a good it's a good year. Like if with the Dragons, for instance, if mm. they made the eight, the successful year. Mm. The Roosters, we're a team that we expect excellence. We expect accept, you know, nothing but the best. And if we don't win the comp, then it's a it's a failure for us. And it's a failure for Melbourne. It's a failure for Penrith. If they don't win the season, it's it's yeah, it's not what we intended to do. And and we're not one of those teams. We're a star-studded team. We're we're a, we're a great team and we're not one of those teams that are in a rebuild stage or a stage where if they make the finals that's good enough like uh, unless we win the premiership i feel like that, that nothing's good enough yeah well one of those other star-studded teams that have been in the headlights or headlines rather um the brisbane broncos with um the moving on of kevy walters we we did that emergency podcast and even since then um it, it's it's hard to know what actually went down at the end of the season. In terms of the review you're talking about there? Yeah, because I'm, I'm very confused. Some people say this has been, the, the deal has been sorted since as, as far back as August. So they made a call then. Some people saying it's a, a response to the review. Some people saying it's a response to Kevy's response to the review. But for me, looking at it, it, it your players play, your coaches coach, your administrators and your big decision makers, your CEOs, your chairmen, they've got to make those tough decisions. And and I think the, the way it's been handled, it doesn't stack up that it's come from a review because, you know, the fact that Maguire's in three days, four days after the review, like that's not a re the review, you know, Kevy gets told on the Thursday and... Maguire's doing a press conference on the Tuesday. Mm. That that's too short a time frame to to organise and, and and broker a deal and an interview with the potential candidates. It's and, and even this the, the idea that this review was a basically a, a QR code and a go like basic um survey, like a survey monkey kind of thing. Like, what is it, David? I said this on 360 last night. It's like David Brent. Mm. You know, oh, to what... Oh, oh Kevy, under strength, you've just put coaching. It's like, <laughs> uh, oh, you know, a, a multiple choice question. And that it is um, anonymous. Like, that's not the same because, you know, Fletcher Baker's opinion isn't the same as Patrick Carrigan. Mm. But if they're... If it's anonymous and you're filling out a questionnaire, which you can't get a real feel for anyway. Like, what is it? To some extent, very much so. Not at all. Don't know. It's like, the, what are those your four options? Mm. Like, I've got my one here. <laughs> 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 There's no options. It's, a, it's just a score on this one. Yeah, I mean, 
Hey, mate, it's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever seen, in all honesty. This press conference that Dave Donaghy and Michael Maguire did yesterday where they're trying to claim that they this all happened in a few days. Oh, yeah, it all started a few days ago. Yeah. It's like it's, it's a fuck, load of nonsense. Yeah. Absolute nonsense. If you have a look at every other team that's looked for a coach, it's taken months and months mm. for it to, to happen, and this just seemed to happen in, what, three days? Three days. Less than three days. Yeah, um, yeah there's, there's something wrong there. But well, like let, let's look at some recent examples. So, uh, Parramatta are one mm -hmm. that was uh, handled poorly. South Sydney, uh, I think, again handled poorly. The fact that you know the Broncos players basically find out through the media. <laughs> look, I understand it happened at the end of the season, but I, I think I think back to the Sharks, right? When John Morris was in charge, and the leaders at the Sharks. Basically, they had a tough decision to make. That's why you're the CEO. That's why you're the chairman. That's why you get uh, in those roles of responsibility. That you've got to master the art of decision making. Now, it, John Morris doesn't want to hear the fact that he's he's being moved on, and they're electing to go with who they think is a better coach in Craig Fitzgibbon. And, and people debated whether that was the right or the wrong decision. But ultimately, the Sharks' leaders said, "No, we're doing this for this reason." That we 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 back Craig Fitzgibbon to, to come in and be our coach, and it's it looks as though that decision has worked. And just as an organisation, I think although John Morris probably didn't agree with the decision, you know, I think you can accept it. Like man to man, you can accept that. Like you know, you, you're telling me you're being you're being upfront, honest, and you and you're speaking the truth. Like this just seems to be. A bit of a mess. No one really knows what's happened. And, you know, you, you can try and spin it in a certain way and, and make it look good. But I think fundamentally you you, you, just, you, you feel, yeah, you, you, it's got, you feel, I don't know, a mix of emotions in more negative style emotions where I think if you're honest enough front, maybe Kevy doesn't want to hear that news. But later on, he respects it, and I think everybody else gets a level of respect. And because they need to unite that club, in my opinion, that's one of the, the issues that Maguire will have. But when there's a level of distrust there, especially from the top, you're going, "Well, hang on a minute they they manipulated a situation to get rid of the coach. There's a lack of trust there within the organization. It's just it just doesn't seem to stack up for me, and, yeah. and it's it, it's not how." Big decisions should be made, in my opinion. No, and fans are not stupid. They want authenticity from yeah. their from their leaders at their club. And Kevin Walters is a is a very authentic man. He he is absolutely transparent. He put paints himself out there in Origin, doing press conferences, holding back tears, holding back tears at the Brisbane press conference. He's an authentic man. And Mark Maguire and Dave Donaghy are both being so disingenuous. Like it's. It's honestly, it's embarrassing. And it just, it's such a shame because, like, Michael Maguire had the biggest sook ever when Anthony Seabolt took his job. And everyone would listen to imagine he said that Seabolt white outed him. That's what he said to everybody. Yeah. And then now he's done the exact same thing to Kevin Walters. Um, I don't know. Probably, I don't know if he's white answered him. Well, he has. Reckon, if he, if, he, if the conversations he, have been happening while the season's going on and he's putting his hand forward. Maybe he's being approached and said, like, look, can you take this? Like, would you be interested? And he's not going to say no. No, he's entitled to say yes. But that, but I'm, what I'm saying is he had this massive sook when the same thing happened to him. Yeah. And now he's going to, you know, pretend that he had nothing to do with mm. it. It all happened in the last few days. It's crazy. Yeah. I, uh, look, I don't think he, he's probably got to get on the in line with the key decision makers and be like, oh, look, this is, is this opportunity did just spring up. I, I don't think it's fair to say he white anted white Kevy. I, I just think Kevy deserved, for what he's done for that club, He people will argue whether or not he deserved um, an opportunity next year to turn things around based off the fact that he took him to the grand final and the injury gods weren't exactly great for them this year. Do and people can go... He should have been given an opportunity next year. Or some people go, no, it, it is time for change. But I think the, there's one thing that Kevy Walters fundamentally deserved, and it's a respect element of this decision and the truth and not hiding behind a survey, not hiding behind a review. Just tell him that be upfront and honest with him and say, Kevy, look, mate, we're going to go in a different direction for reason X, Y, and Z, and you can disagree with them, but we're the decision makers and this is what we're going to do. Yeah, I don't think um, Maguire is like fully to blame for the how it was 
handle. But do you think he's feeling like pressured after that? Like obviously the Broncos are just the leader. The leaders up top, they're willing to sack you on a moment's notice if you have a poor season. Like what if Maguire goes out there and they have another poor season? Well, I think that's the nature of coaching. But the, the nature of uh, administration and, and CEOs and leaders is to to have a to to make it's you're in a position we've got to make difficult decisions mm. and and, impa- and and they're business decisions, but they're also they impact people on an emotional level, and when they impact people on an emotional level, I think you deserve the truth. I, I've I've had it before where you know I was when I was leaving the Bulldogs, I felt like I didn't get the truth and. and Look, it, it took me a while to overcome that with some people who I respected, and it, I, I thought very deeply about this. And it's like, well, I'm going to let that one go. I'm not going to hold on to that and be like, well, I, I'm going to remember the better times because I went on to ultimately something a bit better in the Dragons, and maybe I was I was looking for a change myself. But fundamentally, I felt a bit pissed off at the way the decision w- was was handled and not getting the truth. Where uh, and and Kevy deserves that. Like, mm. I think everyone does. What's well, he? Six-time Premiership winner, there or yeah. five-time Premiership winner, whatever it is. And, and w- w- one of Wayne Bennett's things is, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. You might not like what you're gonna hit, what you're about to hear. And uh, uh, there's been a number of players and former players who I've spoken to in the past, and they say, look, Wayne delivered some home truths to me that I didn't like and I didn't want to hear. And I was pissed off at him. But ultimately, when I reflect upon that, he treated me like a man and he and he was the, he told me the truth. And it wasn't something I wanted to hear, but I respect him for giving me that truth. Instead of trying to put fluff or spin or trying to, you know, manipulate, oh, you know, we, we, we can't squeeze you in for the cat. It's like, no excuses, it's the truth. Mm. And I think in the long run, people respect that more than fluff and spin and innuendo and yeah all that nonsense that is a part of this i think it actually makes Maguire's job even more difficult now yeah and he's coming off the back of i think six losing seasons in a row as a head coach his last three at south and then the three at the tigers so yeah it's funny that you'd say oh he's the only man for the job he's the only candidate out there well because he won an origin series and because he had a good run with a gun kiwi team like his last six NRL seasons were all failures. So we'll see what happens. But the other thing as well is you want to um, – the players – at first, the, the way they did it, the questionnaire comes out and then everyone blames the players for it. You know, when really the reality is Carl Morris was over in Europe in the sum, in the European summer talking about wanting to get rid of Kevy to other executives in the NRL. So Well, 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 well again, that, that that's my point, Charlie. It, it creates a, an environment of mistrust and an environment of not – of with that with that level of behavior is okay so now the the players they they'd be second guessing themselves about the the front office about saying like well, were you trying you guys trying to throw us under the bus with this survey mm. or, or using this review 100% so n- could, because there's one thing you don't want to be a, as a player it's it's known as a person that gets coaches sacked it's just not what you want to be like i've been put in that position before i was like before that question finishes out of your mouth, the answer is no. Don't come to me and ask me what, what what I think of the coach. Like I'm not going to betray him. Like you figure that out. You, it's you, that's your job as the CEO or as a board member or, or or the chairman or chairwoman of the club. Like that is your role to make those decisions. And yes, you would undoubtedly you would speak to people, but you can't have them make the call. You can't have the players make the call. And it, and it was implied that the players were. Mm. But in terms of like moving forward now, Madge, he's got a number of issues that he's got to sort out. One is uniting the the club and the extended club. And then it, for me, one of the interesting things in watching how this will unfold in the future, Maguire's reaction to Brisbane and Brisbane's reaction to Maguire. So... No, I know from speaking from people at Sales, Maguire doesn't enjoy people sticking their head out, doesn't enjoy any form of celebrity, even though he was part of a team with Russell Crowe. I know he didn't particularly like that element. 
doesn't doesn't enjoy I guess quote unquote players being like a brand. You know, he tries to keep a lid on things. He he didn't he didn't enjoy the the open training sessions. It was very a very secretive approach. Like this is our plan, and no one else can know. And almost I think it salves when, when it was successful and at Wigan, it was an us against them mentality, which can work. And not discounting the fact that it can't work. I've played against Maguire coach teams before and they, they were good and you can tell they were well drilled and well coached. But then with this Brisbane team at the moment, there, there does seem to be an element of celebrity and that uh, and, and brand, which is, uh, you, you can argue whether that needs to be reined in or, or, or celebrated. It, but I don't know if the horse has bolted. And I don't know if you can get that back in now. Mm. Yeah, it, I feel like the Broncos boys. Like I don't know a lot of them personally, but from what you see on the field, I think they're going to be in for a rude shock when when Mad starts talking to them because he's he's a he's a real tough coach. Like I've had him for a few years now, and yeah, he doesn't really cop much bullshit, eh? And yeah. I, like I toss up a lot of it, <laughs> and. <laughs> And um, yeah, it was. It never really was his, you know, favorite thing in the world. And like the flashy, like it doesn't mean anything. But the nail painted and stuff like mm. that. Like he's not going to be a huge fan of it. The try celebrations. He, he's a very respectful guy. Um, he's not going to be a big fan of that stuff. So it's, it, it'll be amazing to see how the the players in that team sort of react and and what their response to his new way of coaching is going to be because it's going to be a hell of a lot different to Kibby Walter. I think Kibby Walters is a nice guy, sort of a, and I don't know for a fact, but like sort of a like best mate sort of coach. Yeah. Whereas Maguire's not not that guy. He's a, he you're going to train hard and you're going to you're going to you're going to earn every win you get. Um, they might not have been successful years like you said before, but the the, the lineup that he was coaching at West Tigers is, is, is miles apart from the talent yeah. that he's got mm. at Brisbane. And if his coaching style that I know can have a really good effects, if he, if he takes that to, to Brisbane, they're going to be a hell of a side. Mm. It's just it's my biggest worry is if there's that victim mentality on the player's end when, when he comes in and starts ruling with an iron fist that they're not really used to. And, yeah, how they, how they react to it, whether they – Accept the fact that they have a fucking poor this year and go, yep, this guy's the guy we need and we need a change, or it's oh fuck this fuck this Madge Maguire yeah. guy, he's working us so hard. He's like that's that's the ultimate thing, I think, at, at, at the Brisbane Broncos at the minute. And like I feel Madge is a good enough coach to to really turn that, that team season around. He he's he knows what he's doing and he wants you to work hard, but it's whether they respond to it. Mm. And, and and actually accept what he's bringing to the table. Yeah. Uh, and Brisbane is is arguably the biggest club in the NRL in terms of m membership, in terms of um, press, in terms of like you know want from its community. Like we we see that that the level of interest that Brisbane Broncos generates. I, I've not seen a fallout from a season anything like this before so we know their reaction for when things are good we know that the reaction and and the interest from when things are bad for, for, for Maguire cheese I'm with you he's known for long and hard days yeah. which I think the Broncos players will react to you don't really have a choice you, you've just got to do that it's going to be bloody hard but it's just you, you you're in because no one wants to be in the position that they're in right now so they'll look at this as like this is a needed change I, I know M Maguire. That's what, you, that's what you'd hope, though. Yeah. Like, they, uh, they, well, that's the intent, yeah. right? So I know at South, he leaned a lot on his leaders. So he leaned a lot on Sam, leaned a lot on GI, leaned a lot, le leaned a lot on, on, on Adam Reynolds and John Sutton. So he's got to look for those leaders about who's going to drive the standards in training because it can't just be that voice. I think that's probably the reason why West Tigers couldn't. I think you couldn't, right, couldn't connect, couldn't, hit the nail right on the couldn't head. Couldn't connect with him mm. because they didn't have the leaders there to mm. go, 
I, I'm going to I'm going to be basically the coach on the field, the coach in the train in the dressing room where. So he leaned on those leaders at the Tigers. They didn't have it. They had people that were going, "Who's this dickhead?" Mm, like hundred yeah, percent. Like, you know what? He's our enemy. He like they couldn't see the fact that they were. He was trying to maybe drag them out of trouble. So mm. it's going to be interesting to see how the players respond. But but also the fact that they do have a celebrity aspect of their mm. roster. And I'm not saying that's the wrong thing, but it's. I know it's something that Maguire does not enjoy. So I know, like, when the the fact when the Burgess boys were, were all about to play together, like he was uh, stressing about the the amount of attention that that was going to get, mm. and that's 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 a feel good news story, like f like feel good, mm. and you know, like. With the marketability of this Broncos team, especially when they go well, mm -hmm. like they're going to be in so much demand, mm -hmm. and and that is going to be a, re a a new test for Maguire. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there, and I, I think now that you've said that, I think Broncos do have the right leaders yeah. at the club to to really push that. I think Paddy Carrigan, yeah, who will have a massive role next year with his leadership, Payne Haas. Adam Reynolds, if he's still there, kicking about. Like, those guys are guys... Well, Adam Reynolds has already been there. He's already mm. experienced it, so he knows what to expect. But, yeah, Paddy Carrigan and and Payne Haas, they're guys I'm thinking are looking at this season going by and going, that that's not good enough. Yeah. We need a change. And they will be able to filter it out through the playing squad. So you, you, you I think they've got the personnel mm. right there. I think you probably need one of Walsh... And Mam, to be to become leaders as well mm. within the group, because you you know they're gonna you know that they're gonna influence uh, what happens on the field. But but I think for what Maguire probably needs to identify which one of those two can be can be that leader within the group can be a standout leader within the group. Mm. Is it still a premiership roster? Because they they lost what they lose four or five of their their players at the end of 2023 and they missed those guys. They especially miss Flegler mm. and they miss Herbie Farmworth as well. Um, they missed Kurt Ka Capewell. Like, I don't know if they're still – like everyone's going to probably think top four minimum for the Broncos next year, but I actually don't know if they've still got a top four roster. Look, th there's a lot of things that w will need to go their way. You, you look at the competition that, that, that they'll face. Melbourne improve. With um, Big Stefano Utoya Kamano going there, yeah. Penrith Panthers they lose a couple, but they gain a couple. The Roosters we've spoken about, the Sharks will improve, the Dogs will improve. Mm. Mm. Sharks um, they get Adam for Adam Blake. Th like, uh, and that that's just off the, the top of my head. There's a number of other teams that will will, will, will look to see improvement in them. The, the Dolphins, the Cowboys, you know, the Titans with the second year and Des with. Tina, like the, the they, dragons again with their with the acquisitions of Cork and Holmes. Like they've also got to work out what's happening with Adam Reynolds. How healthy is mm. he moving forward? Because next year, I think next year is his last contracted year. They're going to try and extend mm. him. Then you've got Cobbo and Stags are both November one yeah. guys. Who do you keep out of them? And if you don't keep, if you, the one you don't keep, does he then kick stones for the rest of the year, or yeah. does he like look forward to the move? Like it's a lot. It's a tough, tough job. Yeah, I think uh, you've got. A lot of upside, though, with that roster because you've got a lot of players that have yet to reach their potential. So Mariner is one. Um, Piakura. Piakura. Um, the, the other big front rower. Um, Xavier Willison. Xavier Willison. You've got two potential really good... What's that? Ben Takura? Ben yeah. Takura, yeah. Um, he's a big boy. He's a huge. He's like six foot seven or something. You've got... Yeah. Um, the the winger who played in the GF last year and he's a, he, he had a, an amazing game. Why can't I think of his name? Uh, Jesse Arthur's. Jesse Arthur's. He's been below par this year, but yeah. his, like he was amazing last year, mm. and he's still young. So you, you've got some young play. You've got um, Jordan Ricky, who, who's still young, who's got good football in him. So you, there is a lot of upside there, oh, but they, the, they, the they pressure got... is massive, and and, the, and they're going into it. Uh, immediately, uh, well, they were, if they kept Kevy, they were going in under pressure, uh, and 
you know, you, you know the pressure's coming again. And if they win their first four games, everyone's going to be like, Hagrid's oh, Madge. Yeah, of Welcome course. to Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. Should we move yeah. on to the Daly M's? Let's do the Daly M's, Charlie. Obviously, yeah. this is coming out Thursday morning, so everyone listening will know who won the Daly M's. But, um, but we're recording this Wednesday afternoon, boys, aren't we? We are. So you're going to put together your Daly M teams of the year. Who wants to go first? Oh, we go, do you want to go position for position? So we'll go fullback? Yeah. Tedesco. I've gone... JT as well, Tedesco. Incredible year for him, really, isn't it? Like when people started to sort of doubt him, he lost his origin jersey, but he was so good for the Chooks. He was. Mm. He was amazing. For he, he came he came with a real intent this year, I reckon. Wingers, mm. I've gone Lomax and Warbrick. I've gone... Oh, I was going to read out. I've gone Toto and Lomax. Okay. Fair enough. Centres, Creighton and Farmworth. Yeah, I wouldn't just say. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty... I yeah. think they're pretty set yeah. in stone. They're probably buyers of the year one and two as well, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Like, basically, yeah. 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 Um, halves, I've gone Luai and Hughes. I've gone Burton and yeah. Hughes. Yeah, Burton was a, a close one, but I didn't want to... Mm. Didn't want to be accused of being biased. Obviously, we we assume Jerome Hughes has won the Dally M as well. So oh, congratulations, yeah, yeah. Jerome. I Hughes. think yeah. I think I think he actually wins it by a landslide, yeah. to be yeah. honest. But I, I went Burden just because I over the back end of that period of the year, I just think the the team without him was a huge difference. Yeah, and well, that's probably why Lou eyes in for me is mm. clearly missed a lot of football, and but he was playing seven though. Well. <laughs> I know. So, but I think Luai, what he's done, he, he had an amazing state of origin series as well. Like he was, he was probably doesn't get enough credit for the origin series and his contribution to there. And the fact that he was running the show for the majority of the season or a lot of the season for Panthers. Uh, front rowers, I've gone Tarpane and Collins. Yeah, I went the same. The front row was the hardest one I found mm. to pick, but. I think been a bit of a weird front year for front rowers. Mm. Adam Fanua Blake was nominated, but he's probably had a down year by his standards. Yeah. You would think Fisher uh, Harris. Uh, you know what? It's funny that you playing in the middle, you have a breakout year, then you do the same, and then people just get bored. <laughs> yeah, don't kill me, but I think like like, like people don't, get, like Fanua yeah. Blake. I don't like <laughs> if he had that year and he had a poor year. The oh, Jesus Christ, he's played. Well, but people just get bored of it. Yeah, it's, mm. it's insane. And the same with like, you know, the um, Fisher Harrison Leota. It's like that they've just had normal years, mm. but we look for improve. Like you know, you you constantly seeking for like improvement or a change. Like I reckon Fisher Harris will get. There's a chance he'll get front row of the year next year because he'll have a positive impact on the Warriors. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure. And he missed some time this year as well. Yeah, didn't he, he missed a bit of time this year. I thought actually, like, I thought Penrith Panthers' best front row was Moses Leota this year. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're probably um, right. I hope he doesn't fucking like, kill me for saying that. He's a very scary man, old Fisher Harris. He's got that killer instinct looking, those killer eyes, eh? Mm. But then if you said Fisher Harris was Leota, it would kill you. Yeah. <laughs> the motor. Yeah. Who have you got hooker? Grant? <laughs> Brandon Smith. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, heard that. I heard him too. <laughs> You've got hooker of the year before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. And I'm actually play. a dual position. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not many people have that. No, I've got Harry Grant. <laughs> yeah, I've got Harry Grant too. Uh, Edges, Angus Crichton, kick out? No, nah, Angus Crichton and Aliyah Katoa. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. But I saw Eli Katoa in person in Melbourne on, on Friday. He is, I didn't realise how big he is. Mm. Like huge and thick, yeah. like scary. Last time I was in Melbourne, I seen him at the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what they call Tui's house down there. Tui can meet some ethers. Oh. The <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that one, boys. Uh, Charlie getting into the, checking people out. Yeah, but you because mate, you, you, you're good. On, you're he on the, good. You are on the fitness yeah, train. I'm interested yeah, yeah. to see who your lock is. Isaiah. Really? Yeah. I went Ruben Cotter. Did you? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, mate. Again, Isaiah, yo, it, what he does each and every week, it, it, it's hard to improve on. And he's always putting out nines. Mm. <clears throat> I just think Ruben Cotter, it's a, it's. Yeah, like you said, you get bored of it. But mm. for me, his team wasn't always doing well. Yeah. I, and yeah, he always yeah, stood yeah. up. 
See, I, I honestly... <laughs> he had a very big impact. Mm. And I'm not... Yeah. I honestly think... Isaiah Yo is... Oh, is more important than Nathan Cleary. You've said this before. When I we know, did the, if, you, if the number one... If you were drafting any player in the NRL, you pick Isaiah yeah, Yo. You I stand would, by that, don't I you? stand by, like, 100%. To start a team tomorrow... And I know people go, well, clearly he did that in the grand final and Yo was off. I, I honestly, I, I don't think there's a... Mate, the last the last few games, I, I was thinking that question, mate, I'd, ne- I'd go close to Cam McInnes the way he's playing at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, I um, know what he's going to bring to the team, like, at training and just, like, just watching him play, like, he never fucking stops. Yeah. I know what you mean, uh, uh, but I just think. But the magic of Cleary is like, what about that sequence against the Sharks where he kicks the forty yeah, twenty, and then the next play or a couple plays later puts Alamotti in with like the perfect pass? Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, he, I think I think I'm with you. I think Nathan <laughs> Cleary is definitely the most important like, player. That is like he's just a freak, Nathan Cleary. That grand final, I, who was more important in that last ten minutes, Nathan Cleary or Isaiah? Yeah, yeah but you're just looking at the, what one. I think over the course. Well, what's of the, the most s- important game of the year? All right, you're right, Charlie. Thank well you. done. Thank you. All right. Well, that's our Dally M. What's your bench? I'll go with Len Yu, obviously. But... Yeah, Len Yu would be bench player. And then Captain Crichton. What about Wishart on the bench there as well? Oh, that's not a bad shout. Like, fair. considering everything oh, he did, shit, the utility very, player. Yeah, yeah very you know what, he, Yeah. Probably more impactful, yeah. yeah. And I just feel like he started most of the season starting. That's a fair point. <laughs> he did. So did Len Yu, though. He started a... Oh, didn't he? No, he played like three. He started oh, like three. Yeah, Len, you then. <laughs> Would you go, Len, you got suspended for like six games. Yeah, you can't oh, win yeah, it at all. Really. No, yeah. no. All right, we're shot then. We're shot, yeah. Um, thanks, mate. Coach? Uh, I'll go Sorrello. Just yeah, for me you. too. Just that, for you, bro. Thanks, mate. Fair enough. Thank you. All right, well, that's our Dally M's. Um, We'll get into the who's got to cook, Charlie. I know you're big onto this. You've been checking out how thick people are. Yeah, this is all thanks to my muscle chef fueling everybody, every goal. How good is it, Charlie? I love my muscle chef, Jimmy. It's been incredible to have a few meals. I know you, you missed out on the meals. You just got the bars, mm. but you go and buy your own meals all the time. Well, you know what's done, done my head in? Mm. The, my muscle chef, the, they, we were talking on the podcast that Dale Finucan likes them. Yeah. Dale sends me a picture. Thanks, mate. All these... <laughs> All these my muscle chef meals have gone to Dale, the protein bars. I got like two protein bars. You've pilfered them all. You're looking beefy, but maybe I'll just get online and, and order a couple because they've got a promo code, don't they? They do. They've given us a promo code, save120, which is to save $120. So, and if you jump on now, you get $120 off your first six orders. You can order now. And then, Jimmy, guess what? Comes in time for grand final day. How and then. That? Forget cooking on grand final day. Who can be bothered to get the Barbie out? Just whack a few my muscle chefs in. You can even, you know what, pre-game, three minutes, bang, put, leave it rest on the side for a minute, away you go. Perry Perry chicken, bit of a favourite of mine. I love the chicken chipotle bowls. Oh, They're yes, amazing, they yeah, are. heaps of protein because I'm mm. bulking, obviously, you thanks to my muscle shell. looking very thick as well. Uh, person I've got to cook is, I was speaking about him before, Isaiah Yo. I think he will be pulling all the strings. I think Melbourne will target him as well. Um, I think to stop Penrith and to stop Cleary, you stop, yo. And that's why he's got to cook. It'll be as well like the way he pulls all the strings. That is how the head chef tends to operate. Uh, I've got the pretty much the whole middle pack of, of Melbourne. They get the, with, uh, <clears throat> with Nelson missing, it's going to be you know, a tough ask and who's going to step up as almost an enforcer. I think Josh King mostly is is the guy that they need to stand up and we spoke about last week about the impact that Fisher Harris and Leota have in the grand final and finals and the points scored when they're on the field. I think obviously Melbourne have to score a few of the points while they're, they're on the bench and for them to do that, they're going to have to stop them from scoring points while they're on the field and I think the middle forward pack needs to do a good job in, in alleviate, alleviating that. I've gone Cam Munster. I think over the last decade, there's probably not been a player who steps up in big games more than Cameron Munster. The way he plays in origin in finals games, he's just a freak, an absolute freak. He's as clutch as they come. And I reckon if he win, if if, if Melbourne win, he's going to be the best player on the field. Um, So I think he's got to cook this weekend. Yeah, fair play. Well, that's all thanks to my muscle chef fueling everybody, every goal. That's right, Jimmy. Get it from Woolworths as well. I think it's over in over 7,000 grocery stores. I get it from the IGA. It's nice and easy, bang. Yeah, Thanks bang. For I'm more of a Woolies man, you know. Yeah. 
grab your fruit. Big industry, man, eh? Yeah. 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 IGA, nice local produce. Yeah, nice. I just go to the farmer's market. <laughs> yeah. so. All right, well, it's the grand final. Jeez, we've talked a lot. We better get into the... We just the, had to pause there for a second as well. Yeah. Because Elliot Whitehead's coming on for a chat. But um, cheese is in here, so Elliot was Elliot scared to come yeah, in here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said, I was going to stab said, him too. Do you want to come in? He's like, yeah, sure. I said, oh, we're we'll just finished up with Brandon Smithy. Oh, I actually, um, <laughs> I, I just couldn't get, get get a beer. So yeah, um, yeah. I have the pen ready. I was going to stab him in the neck. I said, don't, I said, don't worry, mate. I'll, t- I'll text you when he's when cheese is gone because he, he doesn't like confrontation, Elliot. So, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into the grand final. Um, where do you think this game's at, Cheese? You've played against both these teams. You obviously played with the Melbourne Storm. Um, what, what are your initial thoughts? Uh, yeah, I spoke about, you know, who's got to cook. I, I think it's it's one in the middle. The game's one in the middle. Obviously, the points are scored out wide, but everything that built up into those points, I think, it is, is the work done in the middle, the ruck speed, the tackle control. Um, what it takes to win games is is that grind, and especially the game style that Penrith bring. Melbourne are very good at it as well. It's that that grind the game out, get through your sets. But I think just where Melbourne's got that execution and that little X factor, like with Ryan Pappenhausen, Jerome Hughes, Munster, I think they've got the better chance of scoring points. Mm. And I know, obviously, Penrith have the, the same, but I just think... Yeah, I'm I'm with Melbourne, and I think uh, yeah, I I reckon both teams would feel if they play their best game, they win. Mm. Like, well, they're both going to need to play their best game to win. You'd hope so. But you they, hope it does not shit. It won't be like these two teams are too good, mm. and it it could come down to a moment of brilliance. Uh, it's like field position is going to be. The, the the king of the game, I mm. think. I think Melbourne's defense on the, their goal line is not actually the greatest. If you look at their stats mm. over the over the season, I think they're letting like forty one tries inside their ten. To Penrith, have only let in twenty five. That is some great knowledge, cheese that you've brought to the table. Yeah, you, you, and you make a good point there. The field. I think we just battle. went through it today, so yeah. I, it's fresh. We yeah. we let in forty two, and I think if if Melbourne obviously can limit. Yeah, the amount of time that Penrith are uh, attacking their their goal line, then, but at the same time, it's it's a different beast. Grand Grand Finals are, are different. Mm. You, you've been in a lot of them, and you know that anything can happen. Anything can happen in that eighty minutes. Yeah, I, I'm looking at back to round twenty four, where Melbourne actually won at Penrith Park twenty four points to twenty two, and I looked at that game, and I thought Penrith were the better team. They're the they had a try scored that for me was a clear obstruction on Cleary off the base of the scrum. Um, they got a penalty to to win the game and take the two. Um, yeah, Nelson was simbined and 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 that didn't help Melbourne's cause in terms of winning that game. But then Cleary goes off with ten minutes to go. I, I think if Cleary can stay fit and and stay on the field for for eighty minutes and Penrith play their best and Melbourne play their best, I've got Penrith slightly ahead. You know what's incredible about the two rosters is Penrith get a lot of um, credit for being a development club. So they've got 13 players starting in this grand final who debuted at Penrith. But Melbourne are the exact same. They've got 13 players who debuted at Melbourne, yeah, making wow. their um, who made their debut in Melbourne. Yeah, that's uh, something they're not known for. They're not yeah. known for as a development club, but it's incredible like what they've done. And even the guys that they've brought in um, – they're guys who were on the scrap heap and then they've turned into like Ellie mm. Katara and Sean Bloor were at the West Tigers and the New Zealand Warriors and they were both those clubs were happy to see them go and they've turned them into two of the best back rowers in the well, game. Yeah. Well, uh, and you've got Jerome Hughes played two games outside of Melbourne and then like Josh King, who was at Newcastle, Newcastle barely yeah. won a game. Nick Meaney at the Dogs. Nick yeah. Meaney at the Dogs. Like, yeah. Wishart couldn't, couldn't, couldn't crack get the Dragons. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't even get a dragons. contract from yeah. the Dragons. It is it is amazing the environment, but also the, the level, the standard of some of the players that bring those players up. And we've seen so many, like you, you Katoas of the world, move on from Melbourne. That intrigues uh, me on the uh, development, like how. Yeah, that's crazy. Because you, I see the like Gussie's got Gus Gould's obviously gone to the Bulldogs now, but mate, they're winning every junior competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
And mm. I'm guessing he done the same thing at Penrith because yeah. when he was there, they were winning every junior competition. And I wonder mm. how much clubs need to invest in that more. Mm. Well, let's just have a, a quick go through the teams. Let's c- compare them. So I'll start with the, the wingers. Obviously, Toto brings the meters, but the, the height advantage is obviously with the Melbourne Storm and Coates and Warbrick are two amazing mm. wingers. Taruva, obviously moving on. Ivan Cleary, I think, did he drop him that last He did, game? he dropped him yeah, for a couple of games, yeah. a couple of games, so I reckon the... Uh, as a, I reckon the Storm have got them covered on, on the wings and that big height advantage, they did go to that last time they played. Yeah, I I, I think Toto is the best winger in the game, if not best winger ever to play the game. Yeah. He's, he's going to be that yeah that person. But so. he's going to get but targeted. He, but he, but yeah. he is short, but yeah. he's going he's, he's gonna to turn up in the 70th minute of the game yeah. and run for a 20-metre carry and, and you know that's going to happen. Like Yeah. His, his I guess, talents aren't... You know, catching the ball, but mate, he's teams targeted all the time. Yeah, they've let in twenty five tries for the year. Like, mm. it, he obviously does a good job at, at yeah. refusing it. Well, well, they Penrith do a good job in not allowing teams to get down there. Mm. That, that's one of the, or they drag you into such a battle that you, you you're so fatigued by the time you get down there, you don't know if you're coming or going. You've got to they they emphasize kick pressure as well, mm. like. Give us a little grubber instead. <laughs> mm. So probably slight advantage for Melbourne, but that's it. Like with Toto, what he brings through the rock and the quick play of the balls where Melbourne look like they could be exposed. Mm. Um, the centres. You've got Alamotti and Tango, Isaac, Tango versus... Um, Meany. Meany and... Howarth. Howarth. Was Howard there when you were there? Yeah. Because he was touted as like the gun school kid, wasn't he, coming yep. through. And then, But then Melbourne kept him in the wings for ages. Yeah, but that's what uh, that's what Melbourne do. That, like he was a, an unbelievable talent, but that's all he was at the time. Like I lived, he lived with me when we were there and like his footy brain wasn't there. Like he, he didn't, couldn't read the fence well. Like physically, just the most gifted person you've seen on the training paddock, but like fitness and and footy brains wasn't there. And and Bellamy's not the type of guy that's going to throw just because you're on big money. He's not going to throw you into the walls when you're not ready. And I feel like he done a really good job biding his time with Jack. And now mm. that he's ready, he's performing on the biggest stage. Yeah, like it, it, it can easily go those ways with those talented players. You can throw them into. The, and absolutely knock their confidence off and go, holy shit, I might not be ready for this this NRL stuff. But I feel like he held him back for that long. And everyone was calling for him to play. The players wanted him to play. Um, you know, the, the fans mm. wanted him to play. But, you know, Bellamy, he doesn't, he doesn't just throw people in for the sake of throwing mm. when you earn that jersey. I reckon it's pretty even in the census. Yeah. I, I think so as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the spine. I've, <laughs> like, I'm not going to say it's not even because it, it's it's purely even. Like, is, it, do you know there's, there's one sl- thing. There's lately one, Melbourne. Uh, yeah, but. I, With their form that they're in, and that's nothing against Penrith, but like the especially recent form of Melbourne. Melbourne spine is hot. The, the, I had the 13 of the spine. Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I, when you, I feel yeah. like the modern day and the way Penrith play, the, the 13 is yeah. part of the spine. I'm with you. And yeah. that, that that balances it out, I think. Yeah, you, you know what, geez, uh, you, you, you're right. I guess Melbourne don't rely on that lock forward to unlock no. their attack. Though. Mm. They play a, a style that is very much um, out of dummy half and then or Hughes or Munster get the football. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree, but yeah. I, I just feel like it's hard to leave Yo out yeah, of the spine I, of the because the pen, cause he is such a big part mm. of how that ball has con- contributed to the team. Mm. I feel like you can't you so, can't ignore no, yeah you can't ignore the right. fact that he's he's a spine member. Yeah, if if, if he goes, you're you're walking yeah. a bit different. Yes, no, oh, no, hundred mm. percent. Well, well, but then again, in the he did go for part of that grand final win last year, mm. and look what Nathan did mm. when he got 
on ball. Yeah, and you're still walking, just, yeah. but you're walking a bit. Yeah. Different. <laughs> Mitch Kenny also, like, especially yeah. defensively, is an yeah, absolute I think, gun. Like, I, the gap between Harry and Mitch Kenny is not as big as what people mm. think it is. Mitch Kenny doesn't get enough credit for his contribution <laughs> to that team. He is a he, dog, man. He, even, even that, even that, the Nathan Cleary try, if it's not for Mitch Kenny's little bit of deception, mm. just look to the right, play to the left. Cle- the gap for Cleary isn't uh, as obvious to go into and, and yeah, maybe he got, gets closed he got, down. He got Jordan Ricky of Beauty in that mm. GF. Uh, I can't. Have to pick, I, I yeah. actually can't. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I reckon... If I had to pick one, I'd pick Melbourne. Yeah, I, I reckon just, just off recent, recent form. Mm. Slightly give Melbourne. Um, edge back rows. <sighs> Liam Martin, Garner. I'd say it's even. The male is Sorensen might play though, yeah, isn't I'm, it? I'm hearing that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. How long has he had? He's played? been out with the hammy. For how long? Uh, not, that, not that long, oh, no. Really? Not that long, no. I haven't seen him play. He, well, he did his MCL this year as well. He's been sort of mm. in and out of the team all year, but the male is his fit. Mm. Oh, that would be a blow to the heart for one of them. Yeah, well, who It'd comes go- out? Garner would probably drop to the bench. And, and then... Eisenhut maybe drops yeah, out. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. have a look at us on the bench. I, um... Especially if they want to keep... Yeah, they'll keep Smith just... and Henry. <laughs> you could, yeah, you could just... get rid of Brad Schneider. Yes, no, they might just go look. Yeah, it's... I've got Ali Katoa over Martin. But really, yeah, mate, no way. Well, <laughs> I picked him as my telling him, mate. Li- <laughs> mate, Liam Martin, that he's the reason why. Yeah, I've got I reckon the he's a big game with, player, yeah. but I, I've I rate Ali Katoa's year. I, I, I know that, but I, I reckon I'd I'd have Martin all day. I was worried for Penrith when he went for the HIA, yeah, and because it looked like it was a. Bad HIA it at did. first, yeah, but it was he passed a bad it. HIA. He passed it. He did. <laughs> um. I'm going to go Penrith for the edges. Right. Melbourne have got Katoa and uh, I would, I'd, I'd say that the two edges, if it's Sorensen, they're better. Mm. But. I'll, I'll go Penrith. Um, we've already done yeah. uh, middles. Penrith. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's where Penrith have a, the big advantage yeah. for me. I love Alec McDonald off the bench, yeah, though. He's I really man, like him. Yeah, yeah the, the bench is... Their bench is not as good as Melbourne's bench. Yeah. But... Mm. We were talking about the forwards. Yeah. The middle, uh, just purely mid, like start and middle. The starting, so you go. the starting middles is, yeah. that's the big difference. And that's why I think the game is won with mm. those forwards at Melbourne being able to just hold them off. That the, well, That's a big job. They've just got to hold their own in the middle. Would you start Welsh with all his experience in big games over Tui? Kamikamika? With Josh King. Yeah. I just don't think you start Welsh over... Just because he's played like thirty minutes in the last three weeks. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you, you know, oh, yeah. You lose it a bit of punch there with um, Kamakamitha if he's not starting with with Welsh. You, you know exactly what you you're gonna get. It's a tough call, but but I, whoever you go with, I've got the the strength un, undoubtedly advantage Penrith. Trent Lear has been a nice, mm. little bit of a like. Mm. An unsung hero for them as well. He plays mm. big minutes. Mm. Um, bench, you're going to go Melbourne? Melbourne? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Mm. Well, I think that's where Melbourne's biggest advantage is. Advantage yeah. Well, it, we notice when, when when Penrith take their two middles off, their intensity just dips a little bit. Mm. And when they come back on, it, it, it rises. And just Melbourne's advantage with... Uh, the form of the spine could really could really show there, but I, I just think it it's the final we you know we respectfully cheese. M- most of the NRL public were, were looking forward to. Most would say it's the the best two teams in the competition overall for the whole season. Let, let's hope the players do the talking and the recent bunker interference or match official calls aren't spoken about. Um, Next week, uh, like I say at the at the start of the preview, I've, I've got Penrith just basically off. I thought they were the better team last time they played. And I've got Melbourne just because I used to play for them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, That's I, I, literally yeah. what I'm doing yeah. right there. Yeah, it's, it's, I, it I, you could honestly toss, flip yeah. Yeah, toss a coin mm. and, and you're probably right. Mm. 
I think Penrith win just. Mm. Dylan Edwards, Clive Churchill. Are you going to go? Oh, we've got Clive Churchill's in there. I'm going to go. Oh, for Clive Churchill, well, you, you've got to imagine if Penrith win, it's going to be Edwards, Yo, or Cleary, maybe Luai. It's one of those four. Mm. I think it. I think if Penrith win, it's no one but Cleary. Mm. I'm going to go back my mate as a Yo. One other thing as well, if the, if Penrith do win their four straight premiership, Ivan Cleary actually overtakes Craig Bellamy for legit premierships. Mm. There's another battle. We've spoke about the players, the battle of the coaches. Yeah, two best uh, coaches in the game these days. You could, you would say. No. Well, yeah. you have Wayne Bennett, well, Cam Serrato. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, the, the, over the, the history of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, well, my we'll ADHD is to... kicking in on fucking <laughs> yeah. I'm drawing shit. You, I seen you do my... a few signatures. Mad that is like the amount of stupid things you write <laughs> on your sheet. Anyway. I'm just a fidgety boy. I've got another Hubble ad to go and film, boys. Oh, dear. So I better go. Yeah. Yeah. That was absolutely brilliant. Charlie <laughs> Cheese, keep up the Fuzzle good wear on the TikTok games and singing. Um, <laughs> if this knee doesn't heal, I, I reckon <laughs> yeah, Simon Cowell will find your number and turn you into a star. Um, that's what we've got time for on Midweek Matters with Jam and Cheese. You and reckon Charlie, that's so. all we've got time for? We've just been kicking it, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks uh, for having we'll catch me. catch everyone next week and we'll know the grand final winner soon enough.